Today I've got a bit of a long one. You remember when I made a video, psychedelic one, a couple of videos ago on the SU200 and I used the Monotron um, sounds to create the tracks on the SU200. Today I'm going to pick apart and show you a little bit of the process of the sound design that I did for that. It's a long one, I recorded it in three different sessions each one was about 20 minutes half now. Obviously, I've edited that down. You're stuck with about 20 minutes. Um, if you're interested in this kind of nonsense, give us a subscribe. There's plenty more of it coming, and hopefully some of the others are going to be a little bit shorter. But let's have a look and see what we've got. Straight in, I'm just looking for a bit of noise off of the SU2, uh, off of the Monotron. If I can get the noise on the Monotron, I can chop it down because what I need to create first is a snare drum. So, basis for the track has got to be a snare drum. So, in that little snippet, there is some noise. If I listen and play it back. The editing capabilities on the SU200 are quite limited. So editing the sample is pretty much restricted to start and finish time. You hear the buzz. Super short. That is almost like a wave cycle. But you snip the start and the finish time and then you extract it, add a bit of filter just to accentuate certain parts and then you've got passable snare. You could work more on this but it takes a lot of time. Also, I can increase the volume of the pad. If you increase the volume of the pad, that gives you a higher level when you resample it. So this is all you can do with the SU200 editing samples. Start time, finish time, and resample what you've done. So you press the resample button. You choose the pad that you're going to resample to. And then you press start. As soon as you press the pad, it starts recording, so you press stop instantly. Right. Next bit, I'm looking, same process, but I'm going to make a kick drum with it. So I'm looking for a much bassier sound, something a little bit more kick drum like. You should know what that sounds like. If you're watching this and you don't know what a kick drum sounds like, you've got some major, major issues. You stop trawling YouTube for pointless crap. Okay? Same thing. Find your start point. I'm looking for something with just a smidge of a click there as well, because that helps to make a, a define the start of a, a, of a kick drum. And then have a look at the end point, and then we resample, and then we extract. Now, extract, you capture back some of the sample time. So, with both kick and bass drum, you extend it. The other thing about the resampling is that I can play that, as you see, I can play a drum pattern and resample the whole of that drum pattern. And that means that then I have a drum loop that I can use to build the rest of the track on. And then once again, you extract. I'm going to record over the, the kick drum. I'm going to record over the snare drum. I find the start and the end of my loop. timing going nicely I'm 
make sure I've got the start and the end so it flows round. Now I'm looking at a bit of bass, I think. Or maybe a nice pad, I can't remember. You have to, when you're working with this and you're working in a limited way, you have to think about carefully about the order in which you're going to construct things. I have to start with the drum beat because those two pads take up two of the slots that I can use. Once I've done that, I like to set the mood, which is why I then sample. Floaty ambient pads. And this is one of the joys of the monotron. You don't have to play the keyboard to get sounds out of it. If you're very careful about how you put the feedback and how long the delay time is, you can actually generate, make it self oscillate and generate its own noise. And then you get some really nice spooky wibbly bits, which, yeah. I've got a bit of a, a, a penchant for. Okay. Set everything up, get it recording. Press the record button. When you're recording pads on the SU200, it's got a start gate time. But because you, I want the pads to flow in, come in quietly, and then go out, so you've got a nice, gentle curve in and out you have to auto start it so as soon as I press the auto start button as soon as I press the start button then you start getting it coming in and coming out and working through it's um it's an art once you've done that and you've recorded your pad you have to set the start and the finish times to that one and then you can leave that going looping up once again I apologize for the length of this video but a lot of this if you've done any kind of sound design and music production in total you know that there is a lot of time when you're just stopping and you're listening to what you've produced. Just getting a groove for it, just getting a feel for it. And this is something that you don't really see all that often. I'm checking out for the endpoints to make sure that I've got it so it's trimming off nicely. So you've got a nice curve and a nice wrap around of it. Delete and extract. Yes. Get rid of all the dead space around the bit that you actually want to keep. And then you've got more time to record with later. Because I'm going to do melody line and a bass line. Despite what people think, it is possible to kind of play lines on the monotron. It's not easy, but it is possible. One of the tricks that I use is a little jack, like that. Perfect. Yeah. And that way you can be a bit more precise about how you play. A bit like a stylophone, I guess. with the filters yeah I do I do really like the filters on the monitor it's, it's wonderful it, it's one of the reasons why I, I go back to this and as standard I use it as the delay on, on my kind of live rig thing because it sounds so dirty. Delay on it 
it's so dirty. It's, yeah, yeah. It's a nice, it's a nice, joyous bit of kit. Very, very silly. syncing things up it's got a loop switch on there um, but it's rubbish it distorts everything so you can't actually use it you have to try and get everything so that the timing works properly um, one of the ways that I do that and you'll see later on is I set up the delay on the monotron to give me some actual timing of it. So I'll play the drum beat. And set the delay to fix the time of the drum beat. And then if I play against that delay, to get the timing, I know that I can work because you can't record against the track that's already playing. Makes life difficult, but part of the joy for me is working around the limitations of the kit that you've got. And believe me, these two bits of kit are pretty damn limited. Working with the delay. That's the important thing there. Look. Get it on trigger so it comes off. And that's slot seven, so I've spared you some of the nightmare of going through all of these things. So we've got to slot seven, and then we're going to record the last slot, slot eight. And that, always at the end for me, is kind of like the melody line. It's a long lead kind of line that goes in there. Then we have a bit of fun. We see how much time we've got left and I just fill that up with melody-ish type stuff. sampling time that I had left on that there we go that's pretty much all of it couple of tweaks now because the levels are a bit even so now I will have a listen through and see what I've got and then I'll start thinking about setting levels for the, the pads so that when I play them together you actually get something quite reasonable going on for a little bit of that groove there. So, see how we get on. Right, 
So that pad, I'm going to drop the volume on it because it cut through everything else. So just drop the volume down to something which I think is a bit more reasonable. And then I think I might launch off into a little bit of a jam. So I'm probably, I will leave you with this jam. We'll go into a bit more of a psychedelic experience. So you enjoy. Um, for more of this kind of nonsense, if you really want to watch a middle-aged old fart rediscover an addiction to uh, music gear and talk at you about various ways to play with it, subscribe. Enjoy. Uh, I've got some more Nord Micromodular stuff coming up. Going to finish making the groove box out of that and some more stuff on the uh, ESI, the, my electrode sampler. And I will do get round to doing having a play with the Behringer Crave, which I have used but I haven't explored fully yet. It's a new bit of kit. Um, yeah, welcome back. Thank you for watching. And like I say, subscribe for more of this kind of nonsense. Uh, Enjoy the jam.